In a previous video, which I've linked below, I explained the difference between Docker containers and virtual machines. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of a network built using Docker containers. I'm using GNS3 version 2 on a Mac, but the process is very similar if you're using Windows. In GNS3 preferences, Docker containers, I have multiple Docker containers installed. Please see my other videos for examples on how to install various Docker containers in GNS3. But as an example, I'm going to drag two IP term containers to GNS3. Now in this example, notice the IP term Docker containers being automatically installed into GNS3. So as soon as I added the Docker device to GNS3, GNS3 saw that the files were missing and automatically downloaded the images as required and installed it for me. I'll also bring an open vSwitch switch into the topology, as well as bring a NAT cloud into my GNS3 topology. I'm using version two, so I have a NAT cloud. If you're using an older version of GNS3, you'll need to use the internet cloud. I'll connect my PCs to the Docker container OpenFlow switch and connect the switch to the cloud. Now it takes me longer to build this topology than it does to boot up the switches and the PCs. So what I'll do now is start up the devices and immediately open up a console connection. And as you can see, the devices have already booted. I was showing you that in real time. So my two PCs and my switch have already booted. I'll close my console windows and show you again how quickly these devices can boot up. Docker containers can spin up in milliseconds. So in this example, start up the devices, open up a console connection, and in real time, notice they've already booted. Now in this example, they didn't get IP addresses because I need to do some configuration on the devices. So what I'll do is close the consoles, shut the devices down, and configure them to use DHCP. So I just need to uncomment these lines on my two IP term devices. And I'll do something similar on Ethernet zero of my OpenFlow switch. So what I'll do is start up the devices and open up a console. On the first PC, ifconfig, we have an IP address allocated, 192.168.122.185. On the second PC, we have 192.168.122.224. So ping 192.168.122.185. PC2 can ping PC1. Ping google.com. Ping succeeds. On PC1, ping google.com. The ping succeeds. Now this is an open flow switch. So OVS, VS, CTL, show. Shows us the bridge interface, which is BR0 and the interfaces that are part of this bridge. Ethernet 1 is connected to PC1. Ethernet 2 is connected to PC2. Ethernet 3 is connected to the NAT cloud. Those interfaces are part of the OpenFlow bridge. To view the flows on the switch, we can use the command OVS VSCTL hyphen O, OpenFlow 13 dump flows BR0, 
we can see that all traffic is being sent to the normal port, which essentially means that traditional routing and switching is being used for forwarding of traffic through the open flow switch. So in this example, we have a open flow switch running in a Docker container and two PCs running in Docker containers. The power of a Docker container is it can very quickly boot up, but it's a full PC in that you can install applications as you like. At the moment, Python is not installed, but I could simply install Python on one of the Docker containers. So now on PC1, I can run Python and I could create applications if I wanted to. So this was a small taste of what's possible with Docker containers. They allow you to quickly deploy applications and very quickly spin them up. I hope you found this video useful. If it's been of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.